Hi, I'm Dr. Joan Ayers from Genesee Valley Viewpoint Clinic, and I'm here to talk to you today about giving intramuscular or IM injections. So giving an injection in the muscle is a pretty common occurrence. You've probably seen your veterinarian give vaccines this way. You may have to give an IM injection if you have to give your horse antibiotics, or in some cases, an injectable joint supplement. So good thing about horses is they're very large and they have lots of muscle um, to give an injection in. The most common area that we'll give one is in the neck. Um, there's some important landmarks to remember when giving an injection. So in the horse's neck, they have their spine, which actually curves down from their pole down towards their shoulder. So you don't want to inject in this area. And they also, because their spine curves this way, have a very large ligament that attaches their withers to the back of their pole. And this is all here. So that's not muscle, that's ligament. So when I'm giving an injection, I want to remember to stay above the spine, so about a hand's width above the spine, and about a hand's width in front of the shoulder, and then again, about a hand's width below the mane, so you stay out of the ligament. Now, a lot of times you'll see pictures where there's a triangle dri um, drawn to show this area, and what we're gonna do today is actually put tape so it'll be easier for you to visualize. So now we have our tape in place, and you can see the triangle that I was talking about right here. Now, if it's hard for you to remember exactly where the triangle goes, a simpler way to remember where to give an injection is if you imagine just splitting your horse's neck in half, so dividing it down the middle. That way, if you stay in the upper half, you should stay away from these important things down in the lower part of the neck, so the spine, which you can feel is very bony, and also the jugular vein, which runs in this groove right down the neck, okay? Um, and you can even divide it further by thinking, okay, now that it's divided in half lengthwise, you can divide it in half um, up and down and then stay in this back quadrant. So that's another way to remember where to give an injection. So in our triangle here, if you feel with your fingers, you should be able to feel the muscle very easily. It's pretty soft, there's a little bit of tension, but it's not as hard as bone, okay? Now, when giving an injection, you're going to want to make sure that you have what you need drawn up um, and always double check the dose to make sure you have the correct amount. Um, and if you're drawing it up yourself, also make sure that any extra air has gotten out of the syringe. Now, usually you have to give a pretty large volume. Um, so you can see this is a very large syringe. I'm actually gonna put the needle in separately, um, not attached to the syringe. So this way, if the horse moves, then the needle has a better chance of staying in. Um, if I have this attached to the syringe, if they shake their neck, then there's a good chance that the syringe might go flying um, and you're gonna have to start all over. I also have my nice assistant here holding the horse for me, which you're gonna wanna do um, just for safety's sake so that they can restrain the horse while you're doing the injection and you don't have to focus on that as well. Um, and you're also gonna to want your assistant to stand on the same side as you. That way if the horse does react um, and they happen to pull the horse to them or push the horse away from them, you're on the same side um, so that you're not gonna get pinned in a corner someplace. So the first thing that I do is I usually pinch a little bit of skin here to kind of distract them. And you can see, you can also gauge what they're gonna do. You got kind of reacted a little bit to that, okay? So pinch a little bit of skin, and then what I'm gonna do is actually put the needle directly in, all the way in to the skin, into the muscle. So you can see, all the way in, and I went in all the way into the hub. Um, and the reason you wanna do that is because if you were to get the injection and the needle wasn't all the way in, you might actually push it in further and hit a blood vessel that you didn't realize was there. So now that the needle is in, you can see there's no blood in the hub, um, and that's important because we're giving an injection in the muscle again, we're not giving an injection in a vein. And there are some medications that you cannot give in a vein, but you can give in a muscle. For example, this one, which we're giving, which is penicillin. So I'm now gonna attach the syringe and I'm going to pull back and just make sure that there's no blood in, this, in the um, needle, which you can see, so I'm not in a vessel. So now I know that it's safe to get this medication. So I'm gonna go ahead and give about half of this amount. And usually we say, 
that they shouldn't get more than 20 cc's or 20 milliliters in an injection site. Now, dewdrop moved a little bit, so I'm actually going to check my site again and make sure that there's no blood, and there's still no blood, so I know that it's safe to get the injection. So now that I've given half of it, I'm going to actually pull the needle out just a little bit, and I'm going to redirect it to get it in a new spot. So I did come all the way out of the skin, I just came up just underneath the skin, and now I'm going to put the needle back in all the way and pull back, okay? Check for blood, no blood, and I'm going to go ahead and give the rest of the injection. Now some people don't feel comfortable doing this, which is fine. You can actually take the needle completely out or get a new needle and um, give a second injection in a different location um, if you want to do it. Usually I do it about an inch apart from the first injection, okay? And I'm just going to give her a little massage here, okay? If you are giving an injection and when you draw back you happen to see some blood in your syringe like this, what you're going to want to do is take your needle completely out, put it in a new location. I usually get a fresh needle because there's blood in the needle hub as well, so it might be difficult for you to tell if you move to a new spot whether or not you hit another blood vessel. Check again, um, and if you get this much blood, you might actually have to draw up a new dose of medication to be able to tell. Um, but don't get alarmed, just find a new spot and start over again. So if you're giving multiple IM injections over the course of several days, um, you may need to find some other location to give an injection. Now, you can just alternate between the left and the right sides of the neck, uh, which we usually recommend. Uh, one way to re remember which side of the neck you're giving uh, an injection on is to remember the right at night um, phrase. Uh, that way, if you always give your injection on the right side at night, you always remember um, that to get the left, the injection on the left side in the morning. Now, if you're doing this over more than probably three days, um, you probably will have to start to go to some other locations. So another location that you give, can give an injection um, is in the chest, which is most horses actually tend to tolerate pretty well. Uh, you can see there's nice, large pectoral muscles on either side of the breastbone. Obviously, you don't want to go right in the middle because you'll hit the bone, but you can go right in the muscle on either side. Now, with this location, they are more likely uh, to have some swelling in the site. Usually, it looks worse than it is, but that's one thing that you can do. With them. So besides their neck and chest, horses have very large muscles in their hindquarters as well. Um, you may think the gluteals right here um, looks like a great spot to give an injection. In some cases, um, this has been a spot where injections have been given. However, this is one area we actually usually recommend avoiding um, because if they were to have a complication like an abscess and infection in this area, it could actually damage the muscles here and uh, cause them to have some problems with their movement. Um, and it's also an area where it's not as easy to drain the abscess if needed. Um, so we actually like to go in the back of the thigh. So there's two very large muscles that run down the back of the thigh from kind of the point of the rump, so right here, um, down to about the level of the stifle, which is about right here. And these are called the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus muscles, which you don't need to remember. You just have to remember these nice big um, thigh muscles right beside the tail, okay? Now, there is a slight crease separating those two muscles. You don't want to go in the crease. Just go to either side of that. And you can see as I push, um, there's nice um, muscles on either side. So same as with the, the neck, um, you want to go ahead and put your needle directly in and um, inject your antibiotic. Remember, when you're doing this, because it's, you're in a more dangerous position, you want to stand right next to the horse. That way, if they do decide that they want to strike, um, that you'll be pushed out of the way and they won't have enough room to wind up and actually get good contact with you. Um, and again, make sure that you have somebody um, securing the horse at their head. Um, now, I like to do it on the same side because I can see better and I don't have as long of a reach. You can also, if you feel comfortable, actually reach over and you'll be safe that this way as well um, and give it on the opposite thigh, okay? So I'm gonna uncap my needle. Remember when taking the cap off your needle not to poke yourself. I'm gonna pinch the skin and I'm gonna go in um, 
a nice smooth motion. Um, you don't have to harpoon your horse, you know, you don't have to jab it in there, but you do want to be um, firm about it. Um, you don't want to do it too timidly because if your horse shakes and the needle comes out, that means you're going to have to poke your horse again. And the more that you have to stick your horse with the needle, the less likely they are going to let you keep sticking them with the needle. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the needle in. See, when she kind of moved a little bit, which is fine. And then I just went ahead and put it all the way into the hub. So in conclusion, there are just a few points that you want to remember when giving an IM injection. Um, remember the locations, neck, chest, and the back of the thigh. Remember to alternate between sides, so left and right. And remember when you're giving the injection to draw back and check for blood before injecting. With these simple tips, you should be able to give an IM injection to your horse with relative ease. And remember, if you have any complications, um, so if there's any swelling at the injection site or any heat um, or appears to be painful, call your veterinarian right away. Or if you have any problems giving the injection, do not hesitate to call. Thanks.